Getting the black pieces, facing e4. Gonna be going for the rock solid Cairo. Expecting the advance. For some reason, I just have a feeling we're gonna run against the advance. And uh, of course, I'm a, I'm a chess player, not a bookmaker, like Christian would say. So ends up being the exchange variation with bishop to d3. I think I'm just gonna be playing my pet line, like Ali Rosef, Ali Rosef Yuruja plays against c3. He goes for this quick bg4. Idea to meet queen b3 with queen c7. And okay, f3 is generally pretty clumsy move that we're happy to see. Idea of this whole line is that we stop bishop f4 with queen c7 there. And yeah, when they do knight e2, I think you just go for the bishop trade. His uh, king side is gonna be a little bit weak. No need to rush with taking, just uh, make sure to get yourself developed, e6, bishop, d6. If they play f4, f5, maybe then we take, but yeah, bishop e3, just develop, bishop d6, queen c7 are usually two very natural moves for this position. Knight e2 would be a funny blunder because bishop remains undefended. Don't know, forget about that one. So maybe he will take now, but honestly, if he takes, I think... Mm, could actually be getting realistic attacking chances on the h file. So he just plays b4 because he's in a weird spot. Like he doesn't know what to do. He just plays that move because what to do. Knight e2 would be the move, but then that bishop hangs. b5 could either do knight e7 or knight e5. Both are fine. Knight b8, not bad either, but no need for it. So see, he plays bishop c2 just so. Poor guy just wants to play 92 and develop, you know? Oh my god. <laughs> Getting such a beast opening here. Just uh, queen c7, hitting the h2 pawn. Very hard to even protect against that threat. Like h3 or g3 are both creating a target. g3, I wonder we can just take. Okay, he plays f4 and against this, I think... We get a very nice kind of thematic tactic for the for the Karo. So watch out, boys and girls. Even post the video if you're watching this on YouTube. Because we can go for bishop takes. After which the queen is now kind of unprotected. Plus, there's this little thingy coming over the C5. So just go knight before. Exploit the fact that, you know, queens are on a standoff. Cannot retake, and against the check, we can either go this, either play queen c6. Is queen c6 like forcing queens off? Would love to get an endgame, but maybe he just goes back to d1 and we have an awkward move for the knight, so keep it simple. Knight e2. Could just very well go short castle. No reason why not to do that. Like f5 never a threat because of takes. If knight f3 just put a knight on e4, whenever you can get a knight on e4 like that, it's amazing. A3, because why not? <laughs> why wouldn't you play a3? Maybe he just wants Quincy 2 to not play knight before. Like, poor guy. I'm just like reading him like a book. Yeah, the rook onto the open file. I swear he's gonna do this. But maybe now because I place my rook, he won't. But he probably will. I'm telling you guys, he played a3 to play... See, he wants like queen c2, I swear. I swear he's prepping that. Let's just go a6, maybe prepare b5. Or actually, I could force queens off with a small. Because now pawn on a3 is undefended. But it's pretty funny if he goes there. His whole plan since he played a3. A3 is such a silly move, you can't really justify it, but... I really like to go this deep and try to <laughs> enter my opponent's brain and think about, okay, what's the idea behind their move? This is usually pretty useful skill to have, but you don't want to be exaggerating with it. <laughs> Sometimes they might have no idea while you're seeking for it. Just queen a6, protect this, hitting the knight. Also preparing knight a5, important to mention. Get a knight to the nice square. Mm. Yeah, so he plays knight g3. 
can take a3 but then b7 hangs for no reason so just keep it clean knight a5 knight c4 get rid of the knights double up on the c file can also do this hit the bishop but just knight move is fine hitting his queen take you with a rook prepare to double up uh, maybe he'll try f5 but then we can take get knight on e4 that is going to be a huge knight, especially, you know, when I have the knight on such a nice outpost as e4 and they don't have the light squared bishop or any piece to take it down. That knight is usually stronger than a rook in most positions. Well, not if it's an endgame, but uh, you get what I mean. Please, queen d2, that's still waiting to be captured. I think it's just about being active here. F5, we take 94. So yeah, guys, this is exactly like in life. If you want to be healthy, you need to focus on an active life. That's what we do here with our pieces. Activate the rooks. Now, when everything is active, we can have a snack on A3. Okay. Once a week, you can go for that. Take the free pawn. Rook to queen c3. Place knight e2, inviting me to go over e4, hitting the queen, improving my knight, hitting c3 one more time. I can just take it there twice, but I'm kind of too emotionally attached to my e4 knight right now. Maybe play a move such as bishop b4. I'm just trying to keep the knight uh, there. And uh, highlighting the fact that the rook is pinned. Idea next is just to go bishop c3 and take everything while keeping the juicy knight. So let's see. Opponent doesn't have too many active moves. If I was him, I would really do f5 or something. Otherwise, he won't get any play. I think just bishop c3 is good enough. I hope I'm not running into any back rank checkmate. As long as that doesn't happen, we should be good. So, next. Maybe funny threat could be bishop e1, hitting the queen and the bishop. So yeah, can we do that? That would be hella funny. Let's just go bishop e1. So rook c4, queen e3. And then just take back with a pawn. I'm just gonna play it because it's super funny. <laughs> Everything is fire. Fire on the board. <laughs> he takes there. Of course he does. Smelling opportunity, but I think he can take this. King has to move. And then do not take with the rook. Because you're gonna cry <laughs> after queen d8. But take with a deep one, and I think we've got this under control. Now he needs to take my bishop, but got a pretty interesting fast pawn over there. So I think we can just push at this point. He didn't realize he was check. Well, to be honest, like really honest, he probably didn't realize it was check, but he ran into the best move because all of his pieces are uh, under attack. Like if he does anything else, you know, his queen is under attack, his rook is under attack. So this is a nice intermediate move for him because otherwise he would have lost the rook. But now after c3, I think he's just doomed. Um, he tries this. Do we have a classy finish? I don't think that works. That's actually a good move that I missed. But I think we need to should be safely winning. I will go this far and say that. Takes and takes. I think that's a win. Queen is under attack. 
And, you know, Sito is coming on the next move if he's moving the queen away. So he's moving the queen away. Could just do Sito. He's going to go Fe, but we can go Fe. I think. There's no check. We just like take. Probably will try knight c1 if you ask me. And then maybe just queen d1 is the easiest win. Mm. Yeah, just like here with uh, knight d2 on the very next move, just forcing queens off. I think this should pretty much be game, but okay, opponent actually. It's pretty resourceful. I had to find some moves there. Um, going for these like craziness with bishop b4, bishop takes on c3. Okay, you just can just like take on c3 with the knight in the first place and perhaps get an easier win in the end game. But uh, yeah, for some reason I felt the need to play it a bit more interesting here. Just couldn't control myself. And yeah, I think now knight d2 is really much unstoppable. Hitting the queen. Queen has to move, but queen is pinned. So this queen has to move. I'm going to be getting a new queen. Oh, yeah, I think this should seal the deal and just resigns and we manage to get a game. Wonder if this was any precise. When do you decide to place the black bishop on uh, d6 instead of e7? Well, I would say normally it goes to d6. It's basically when I feel like it's a little bit more aggressive and we could afford to play bishop d6. We could do that, especially when his bishop is like committed on e3. Like, generally, bishop d6 is always good. Like, bishop g5 is never really a problem, even if they get to double the pawns if you get into an end game. So bishop d6 is always fine. It's just that sometimes when I see, okay, like I can play on the queen side, I can just play bishop e7, castle, and just do minority attack. I can do that. But normally, bishop d6 is probably what I do the most. All right, we're getting the black pieces facing e4. Gonna be trying out another Cairo Khan. All pawns, no hopes. So let's see. Do you guys get that Queen's Gambit uh, reference? Hope you do. That's why we've got it in the thumbnail. <laughs> Just uh, getting another of these kind of Carlsbad structures with a knight on f3. Gonna start this way. And get the bishop out to g4. Queen c7 also sort of a nice move to begin with. Stopping their bishop f4 ideas. This is pretty nice little detail. And then knight f6, e6, bishop d6. So whenever they do h3 with the pawn on c3, we just keep the tension. When their bishop is on b5, we normally have to meet h3 with takes. But with the bishop on e2, we just always kind of go back. C e6, just play knight f6. Knight f6, bishop d6 is kind of the thematic way. Okay, he wants this, so I'm just going to start with this against knight g3. It's not like a disaster if he gets knight g3, but I just want to make his life a little bit harder. That's like what you should try uh, to do to your opponent. Knight here. He can castle, I can castle. Castling long in that position may be interesting, but we're not going to be doing that. <laughs> we could do it for fun, but... In the Karo Khan, it's all about attacking him on the queen side. So he plays knight g5, we could exchange. I don't think keeping bishops is, is bad, but normally just trade is fine. Now could get rid of the annoying knight, could also castle. I think we want to get rid of it. There's no like 95 trick because this is covered, so yeah, just push this back. Gonna go there, we castle and actually if I castle now, maybe knight g4 could be a pretty weird idea. Because if I take he's gonna get the attack, so I wanna watch out for that. Knight g4, knight e4 though. Looks pretty good, so yeah, knight g4 I think should be tried, but then I have knight e4.
Could also start 94 in this position. It's always like in the Karo Khan, if you can get 94 supported with F5 is great. Just amazing stuff. Um, the reason why I'm not so thrilled about it is maybe he could try C4 and make it a bit messy. So we've got Carlsbad structure, exchange variation, minority attack. As simple as that. Don't care about anything else. Now against knight g4 is still the same idea. Okay, he plays b4, but now the pawn on c3 is weak. So usually knight e7, knight f5. Okay, knight f5 now not because his knight is on e3, but just knight e4. I think it's a pretty strong move highlighting the weakness of c3 pawn. Expecting bishop d2. Maybe just b5 fixing this weak pawn. I think we like that. Like... As long as he's not in time with something like knight d3, knight c5, b5 is a good move. He's not like threatening c4, is he? So maybe we could wait with that a bit. Could just play knight e7. Knight e7, rook fc8. So C4 there is bishop B4. If he plays like A3, I just want to go there. So yeah, bring the rook. I'm trying to play without B5 if possible. I'm just focusing on the pawn. But maybe I should have played B5 because now... I don't know, we couldn't get his pawn fixed. Maybe just bishop now. Creating a pretty annoying pin. Uh, I think that was a mistake. Maybe yes, C4. I mean, this felt tempting because after g3, I think maybe sacrificing was interesting, but I'm like really trying to also give d6 square for my knight. If we could get it there, that would be amazing. But if c4, I think we definitely must have had something. It's just my intuition that says that. I think you can simply take and... Expecting him to take with a queen, bring knight f5 to d6. If he takes with a pawn, my knight's always going to be a beast on... Uh, E4. Just want to do this. With tempo if possible. Hit the queen. Get the knight around to C4. You're already familiar with this maneuver by now. Okay, so 96, 95. Knight C4. Good trade knights. Take with a queen. That's like fine. Wondering whether it makes any sense to use the other knight for this maneuver. I think it's same thing. He's gonna go there and we go knight c4. Trade, exchange queen, then the endgame is just amazing because we have a target and he does not. As simple as that. In 92, kind of making it a bit easier because we just get this trade and we're gonna be getting the beast knight on c4. Now, if he takes with the rook, maybe queen c4, interesting offering queen trade and queen b3 ideas. Like, obviously, we would love to be trading queens here. Like, his only chance is to keep queens on the board and later on create some complications. But, uh, yeah, I'm really thinking to play this move now. It could potentially decline, play queen f3. Uh... Could also just start with this, hit the knight. I mean, hit the rook with the knight. Mm. I think queen c4 looks nice, but it's might look pretty silly if he doesn't trade. On the other hand, I find this threat being really annoying. I don't know. Maybe I'm overestimating it, but we'll see. If he trades queens, it's just easily winning. Such an easy win if he trades. And they trade, so... <laughs> now, could take with a knight, rook c2, take the bishop. I'm not sure that's a win, actually, there. So I think maybe rushing with taking uh, 
His bishop is a mistake there. I think he's just like uh, take with the rook and try to play for ninety four. He's gonna try f three and then um, we should have other plans. Oh yeah, I think we do it this way. If our knight stands on c four, we're not gonna be able to attack this pawn. So that's why I'm taking with the rook, keeping these ideas. Now, if we also trade both rooks, this is an easy win. But, um, let's just say that doesn't seem to happen very, very soon at least. I would like a g5 move, kind of taking space, just sort of squeezing him. Like to get in this pawn push. I'm just trying to improve on both sides. It's not only about attacking C3 pawn, because if we only attack that, we're not going to be winning by uh, simply attacking a pawn. That's not how most chess games go. Well, some of them you could just do that and win, but not in all of them. So we'll need some kind of pressure on this flank as well. I'm just thinking to bring my king and try to squeeze him like that. I feel like rushing with it would have been inaccurate. And okay, against this, there is h5, takes and rook h8. Rook g1 takes and then maybe f4, but then that doesn't work. I think maybe just h5 idea to take and open up the file. If he plays, uh, okay, so he just goes rook e1. Now, I could be taking here and play rook h8. He could go king g3. Also, I don't need to take. Maybe he wants rook e5. Not sure he wants that. He is potentially playing for it. So I could do rook h8, rook e5. Mm. Takes on g4. Takes back, rook h2, king e3. Ideally, I would like to protect g5 pawn with a pawn and not with a king. That's what's like kind of concerning me a bit. And playing rook e8, f6, it feels like I'm creating a weakness on my own. Which is something I would not do if possible. But okay. Also, it seems pretty unlikely for him to ever get bishop c1, g5, because then this pawn will drop, so. Maybe I was just seeing ghosts there. <laughs> so just go uh, rook h8. See this? Could take. This is just sort of a small trap because of king f6 and rook g4, rook h3, I think. We got another weakness. So perhaps just take... Do I want to play king f6 and delay that? I don't think that makes a lot of sense, so I'd rather just set up a little trap. He goes for this. Now we get to attack his rook. Manage to open up the position and he's gonna have weak pawn on f3. I take king g2, just a uh, rook back. We've got ourselves Brand new weakness. Um, could also give this check. So just here, stop rook g8 and uh, knight f5, knight e3. Now could potentially just uh, maneuver the rook and. Uh, it takes quite a bit of time to like uh, convert these caro little edges, but I think it really, you know, if you can learn this. Thing is just an art and a lifetime skill that could take you pretty far in chess. Mm. The rook there, so I'm just wondering whether there's any chance we could get mated here, but don't think that should be a problem. Can that be a problem? That cannot really be a problem, right? 
In bishop c1, we can at the very least play king e7. Or rook h5. Or knight h4. So many moves there. <laughs> I don't know why I spend that much time on it, but we'll see. Okay, and next I think we just need to trade a pair of rooks. Not sure how to do that. Okay, just rook f4 seems like a weak move to me. Just do this maybe. Also, this thing is sitting in the position for a while. Create another weakness. Pawn takes rook a4. This pawn drops. Maybe could have gone for it earlier. Maybe we had an easier window with this. I, I should have probably considered this idea. <laughs> a bit faster, but I think um, what we did on the king side is very thematic and very good. Just here, if bishop moves, maybe infiltrate with both rooks, <laughs> play for checkmate. Like literally, this is mating that if he moves the bishop, it's pretty hilarious how my rooks are infiltrating. Oh my god, it's gonna be such a dirty mating net. Watch this. <laughs> How are you stopping this? You gotta give up the rook, don't you? This is so dirty. But it looks like... Principle of the two weaknesses will triumph in the end. So yeah, he has to take... Now... Just need to avoid checking f4. Okay, that's actually good for us. Because rook covers it. <laughs> king f4 is actually the move they're setting up a mating net again. So yeah, just king f4 and there's no way for him to avoid mate, is it? Bishop c1, we just take it. It looks like it's mate in one for him, but bishop is just... <laughs> hanging. He should try it, but... Yeah, like otherwise he gets mated there. I don't recommend to go this aggressive with the king if you're not sure. You could just play king f6 and win slowly. But figure out that bishop c1 is not working, which is really the only potential issue with this move. Okay, opponent taking his time. And okay, he realizes there's no way to stop the mate, so just resigns. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how precise was this game. I got an 89. Um, yeah, it was always kind of good. It's just that maybe. Yeah, like for instance, when I played uh, bishop f4, he could do c4. Yeah, I told you he should try c4 now. It was a little bit inaccurate. I'm still better, but he would have gotten some chances. Yeah, now queen c4 felt a bit inaccurate, but when they take, these are so nice. Okay, I'm. I think this was genuinely a good game. <laughs> All right, getting the black pieces, and uh, we're facing a uh, seventeen hundred opponent already. Let's see if the Karakhan is still holding up. Plays with d three, pretty interesting sideline. Gonna be going for d five, and it looks like he's going for knight f three, inviting me to take on e four and enter the end games now. These end games are pretty interesting to play. Um, but to be honest, I think opponent has something different in mind. I'm expecting him to play 9g5. And if he does that, I think it's mainly because of the Jonathan uh, Schrantz video. If he takes, I'm kind of happy. I'm interested to see how these kind of players are 
doing in this queenless middle games. But as, as I was saying, he's gonna do knight uh, g5 and after e d3, bishop takes on d3, knight d7 is an important move to avoid the traps. But I think even simpler just to avoid these kind of shenanigans if you don't want to like remember the theory or anything like that. We could play both knight f6 and e5, I'm pretty sure, and kind of spoil white's fun. So I think that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Yeah, I think just going with knight f6 and <laughs> let's see what he's up to. Yeah, he could do knight c3. I don't really think we mind. Still taking with little kind of similar lines. I'm just like thinking whether to just play e5 and, you know, basically not accept his gambit. I think that's going to make him pretty mad. C94. Trading is okay. I could also play knight bd7. I think taking with f5 could be interesting as well. Probably will play knight back to c3. Spending a little little bit of time here, it's like a pretty near position to me. I'm just trying to figure out what's like the easiest way to develop. Could also do bishop f5, by the way. Bishop f5 is normally a pretty strong move. Putting pressure on the knight. Not necessarily threatening to take, even though we could take and enter the endgame. I don't really want to do that when uh, I don't have the two bishops. So, uh, can you please bishop g5? I'm assuming we're going to see some trades. We also do knight bd7. Maybe that's even more precise, just so we can take on f6 with the knight. Play bishop e7 castle. What I'm trying to do in this game basically is to simply annoy the hell out of my opponent because I'm not accepting his gambit and just to develop my pieces in normal fashion. Okay, here I think I'm actually going to go to e6. I think maybe there could become a target for no reason. So I think e6 is fine. And then we just play bishop e7. I don't mind things such as takes, bishop takes. End games with the bishop pair and double pawns are always really nice, just slightly better. So he probably will try out like knight e4, which again, we don't really mind because there's an easy move breaking that pin, which is bishop e7. And now he could double up my pawns. I will no longer have the bishop pair there, but it's still like very much okay for us. Goes h4, which feels a little bit loose. I can take on e4. He has bishop e7. Is there any crazy intermezzo? Not that one that I can see. Also, we don't have to take. 95 could be a move, but I think just taking to clarify the position is probably the easiest. Bishop takes, queen takes, e7, queen e4 I'm expecting, or even pawn takes. Well, pawn takes would be a mistake in that position because of check, I think, and then he's forced to play queen c3. So expecting this move now, there is bishop to d5. Hitting his queen and centralizing my bishop. If queen a4, maybe b5 could be a move. Not sure on that. Queen a4, I could also just castle. Goes to g4 instead, which is interesting. I could try to play something like f5, but then queen f5. Hmm, maybe just simply castling with f5 afterwards, no need to sack the pawn. It's probably gonna try h5, but I think it's too slow. Now, main question is, can he actually long castle in this uh, position? Taking is perhaps playable, and uh, the main point was that on b3 there was queen a3 check, and the king has to go on a walk, and... 
can easily rescue the bishop. So now continue with f5. That was the main plan. He probably is forced to go to h4, which is not a fun square. Now he tries to keep some kind of attacking chances, although I don't think there's much of an attack going because he can simply sidestep or play rook f7 to protect. And we've got another nice counter check. I mean, not counter check, but counter attack, I meant. And after this, I think we're simply winning because we're going to be picking up the b2 opponent. His king is still in the middle. I think we should be able to open up the position and punish white for this mistake. We actually don't have that much to do. Now also opponent c3 will be dropping, so I think better would have been king d1, but... Yeah, now this is just... Uh, should be winning for us with two extra pawns. Something that I consider is just e4. Hmm. Is there anything better? Hmm, not sure. Okay, so I think I just want to bring the rook over like this, bring the last piece into the attack. Prepare e4. If h6, there's at the very least g6 move. Even though h6, e4 could work even in that case, because we have takes and ed3. But that's not us winning, so I'm just going to play this. Idea to go e4 next, open up the position for the rooks. That's what... Uh, we want here basically e4, d4, e3. Looks kind of crashing. Bishop e2, if check, he goes back. I think still e4 is a good move because, well, we only need to watch out for queen c7, but that's not even creating a threat because this is covered. And he's unable to castle because rook will drop, having a threat of, yeah, just going e3 now after d4. Trading queens is fine. We've got like winning endgame, but this is even more crashing, it feels. Hitting the rook, he kind of has to take day back with the rook, hitting the queen. He's going to be getting queen c7. Maybe that is something I should have calculated more carefully. But at the very least, there's like, you know, if needed, <laughs> just bash it back. Even though that wouldn't really be the way I would love to continue. I'm pretty sure there should be like a forced win that we have with takes and rook e8. Um... Can we actually calculate that? So takes, king takes, rook e8 check. King d1 would be the first thing. We have a check on a1, king c2. There is queen a2, bishop e4. There's like queen a2, king c1. It's getting a little bit unnecessarily complicated. So I think just bishop f7 and making sure you know that. He still cannot castle. There's no need to go for those like crazy lines as long as you're not sure. That could potentially periclitate the result of the game. So just taking the safer approach, preparing these and takes. I'm pretty sure rookie two was winning by force there. But yeah, I couldn't really calculate the whole thing, so then why bother? Um Okay, he does that. Isn't this a check? I think that might be pretty good. We just give a check. He's a rook d1. I'm thinking this should be winning pretty nicely. Because he's going to take. We're going to go rook e8. He has to move the king and then he drops the rook. I think that's pretty clean. Yeah, give a check. Now he's unable to keep this guy under defense. He can go anywhere. We just pick up the rook. And then we're having a lot of mating threats. He's close, but not really. <laughs> uh, that's mate in one last time I checked. So, okay, managed to get a game. So, pretty high rated opponent already, at least for my rating on this account that I have. So, now, looking back at this game, he clearly tried the Jonathan Schrantz trap from the YouTube video. Um, let's go to the analysis tab. I'll just show you what the main point of this was. So White really wants me to do something like ED3. And then their idea is that black plays either knight f6, e6 most of the time, which are huge blunders. Since in that position, after bishop d3, knight f6, white wants to go for knight f7, already completely winning. If we take, there is bishop g6 trap. 
and the uh, wedding check and now the queen drops so this is basically the only thing that the white players are going for and i know that there are these ways in which you know sure this gambit is not amazing if you know how to refute it problem is i'm not like spending every single second of my day reviewing some weird gambit that you know gets played rarely so i just prefer to you know basically be aware of the fact that this exists and take a playable approach that's not trying to win from the opening it's trying just to get a game and i'll play my opponent later the main goal is just not to lose and avoid memorizing these kind of concrete lines so again i could do many other things i just wanted to keep it very simple focus on developing moves um bishop e6 taking with the pawn would have been interesting taking with the knight is definitely feels a little bit more human and i think the main mistake that happened is that he really tried to get in some kind of attack and he should have accepted the fact that okay White's no longer getting an attack and should have gone for queen h4. Really important to keep this square under control because after queen g3, end up picking the pawns. This is basically game over. So I think that was his um, last mistake. So if you're interested to actually refute that gambit in the opening, you could do so by uh, going for ed3, bishop d3, and I think knight d7 or queen c7 are playable. Uh, 97. I actually had a game like this. The problem is I played it quite inaccurately afterwards. I think opponent went for knight c3 and instead of going for a knight e5 type of move, which is very strong, winning the bishop and after that black probably has a pretty big advantage. I think I went for something like knight f6. He went queen e2. I remember playing something like e6, but he really got a nice position after long castle and I couldn't really get my pieces developed and I think I ended up losing that game on my main account. But if you remember this, uh, yeah, like 97 with knight e5, knight c5 kind of ideas. Black is good. Also, queen c7 should be fine. Uh, it's just that personally, I prefer to avoid this kind of craziness when there is a simple continuation uh, available. 